miles in the rain two days ago and yesterday we did 130 miles so we did our our shakedown ride from uh, Roger Green's house in Battle Creek so I'm ready from two years ago yeah. broke on the Mackinac Bridge I hate that bridge well we're not going on the Mackinac Bridge so I'll be good <laughs> yeah well ready as I'll ever be right Fuel and lighter. <laughs> We're looking forward to it. We're going to have a good time. I had a few problems last year, and I think I've got it lined out. So looking forward to really trying it out. We're going to have a good time. Some of us just go on a prayer and a wing. <laughs> VLD. We're all prepared. It's all good. We'll just do it. Running pretty good. <laughs> I'm Jürgen from Genheim in Germany. Ich bin, ich komme aus Deutschland. I can speak in English too. I'm Ursula and I'm from Germany. <laughs> My good friend and uh, US brother John Dobbs bought it. And right after the last cannonball, as we were sitting together in a garage party, uh, we were talking about the chase. So his wife said, oh, somebody should ride Ch uh, Elvis, that's the name of this bike, on the cross-country chase. And I said, oh, I would be up for riding Elvis. And he said, okay, if you're up, then ride it. So that's why I'm here. I'm here. Elvis is here. Ursula is here. We have great weather. We're starting the cross-country chase. This bike was originally bought 49 from an oil tycoon in Texas. And he wanted to have the most expensive bike of the world. So he had somebody built this bike in the 50s. No? And then it was uh, on the Guinness Book of World Records as the most expensive bike of the world. So the bike is in original 1949 Harley-Davidson uh, hat. Everything like that besides the, the engine, the frame and the fork is kind of more or less customized. The first thing that really kind of jumps in your eyes is this huge tail. We can't call it fender because this is really not a fender. <laughs> so it's this huge thing with the saddlebags, with all the lights, with kind of the Cadillac look from, from, the, from behind. And um, the whole bike, if you look at all the details, now, it's not just the chrome, but if you look at everything, it's kind of with an engraving. The whole bike, the whole scheme is going through the whole bike. And then he has not just the big things. Look at this detail, for example, here, the foot pegs. The foot pegs are like angel wings. No? And the very special thing about the angel wings is this here, because there's a second wing here. You can fold it out. Everywhere you have some details like nuts and bolts some jewelries, mirrors here that are come from the cars in the 50s, then you have the lion head. It's really the whole, the whole front looks like a head, like a real lion head.
We are at Hazeldale Elementary School in Springfield, Illinois, and today we have our All Kids Bike Reveal, and this program is, is, was put on by the Striders, and one of their mission is to make sure that all kindergarten and first grade students can know how to ride bikes. I've been very blessed to become ambassadors of All Kids Bikes. It's an organization where we put bicycles back into schools, and um, this is our very first installation into a school so this is the very first one we picked we've actually raised enough money now to fund five schools and uh, each one of these cities that we go to our goal is to put bicycles back into schools we got all these people around here and we're actually testing them and this will go against probably their score on the race <laughs> it's not in the rules yet but who knows we can still put it in there Teams on down. There we go. We'll get this on. Let's try it. Let's see what. Thank Jason Sims and Motorcycle Chase and All Kids Bike Program for choosing us to be a recipient of this wonderful program. Hi, my name is John Bartman. I'm from DeBerry, Florida. I'm riding a 1947 uh, EL knucklehead. Uh, this bike I discovered on last year's chase uh, because my truck broke down and I was stuck in town. After everybody left, I went to a local watering hole to have a couple beers where I met this gal who, whose dead husband's motorcycle was sitting in her basement for the last 40 years. So I immediately asked her if it was for sale. And she said no. So I saw her again the next day and I kept bugging her and uh, I finally got to go over to her house to see it and she still wouldn't let me have it and then uh, the day before I was leaving town at 1030 she made a phone call and she turned to me and said okay I'll sell you the bike and I, I rolled it out of her basement as a chopper from straight out of the 1970s and I took it home to my garage in Florida and uh, unchopped it as I describe it and turned it into into this. My trusty little navigation device will take me on as much a Route 66 as I can possibly ride without having to do any thinking on my own. Just turn where I'm supposed to turn and uh, go where I'm supposed to go. Uh, Billy Richards, Columbia, Missouri. Uh, went on the chase a year and a half ago, had a blast, met a lot of great people, so we decided to do it again. It was an old Kansas City police bike originally. Um, they traded it in, then it became a Sedalia police bike. A uh, collector, somebody bought it, uh, then got old and started in a swap meet. 1984, had to have it, so I bought it. Had rev lights in it originally. Um, they had a civilianized it, put um, leather bags on it. I've got them at home, but they fell apart on the last chase. They chromed some stuff on it that's not supposed to be chromed. I rode it to Sturgis in 88, went to Milwaukee on the 90th anniversary. My ex rode it to Sturgis in 96, Davenport, went on the chase last summer, did just short trips around Missouri and stuff. I got it with 14,000 miles on it, and that's the miles I put on it. It's up. Get a little bit of pulled pork, a little bit of barbecue. Looks good. Looks good. And I'm gonna give you some iced tea. I'm thirsty.
it's, it's incredible. Are you kidding me? Over 100 bikes right here at Motorheads, right? Our southern anchor for Route 66 in Springfield, Illinois. I just want to thank all the riders for being here. Jason Sims and the crew, crew at the Cross Country Chase. Thank you for starting in Springfield, Illinois. We are honored and thrilled to be that starting point. It is absolutely amazing. Not only all the different bikes, the different people, and it's just something you don't see all the time. Where are you going? Santa Monica. This is a 50-50 year I'm riding motorcycles. And I thought this would be a great way of commemorating this. Actually, the motorcycle's been in the family since, I think, 1949. Riding this motorcycle down here, pretty neat. Three seconds, JJ, to the start of the 2022 motorcycle chase. Cross Country Chase, Springfield, Illinois to Santa Monica, California. All right, are you guys ready? ready. Santa Monica as well. Let's go. I'm uh, I'm actually following the map and doing real well with it. You don't know where these turns are coming up, and some of them are not really well marked. Some of them are, are easy to find because there's a T, but others it's just a crossroad. There's no stop sign. There's no uh, there's no marker of any kind. It's just a crossroad. Going well, I think. We'll tell you when we, when we get to the first stop. It's a work in progress. The odometer's a little off. I picked spots that that I know the, the cumulative mileage, and I reset the odometer to the, the to the cumulative mileage. So it's only off by about a tenth, two tenths. How's going? Good. I'm feeling great. I already ended up on the side of the road back there. Um, my gas tank isn't feeding from one side to the other, so I just bent it up and it started feeding. So we're good, back on the road. I lost half of my kicker pedal. Yep, all just the first day. So I don't have an odometer, so I'm just going based off of how long it feels. But it's been good so far. I haven't gotten lost, so. I've done every chase and every cannonball so far that there is, so. Uh, I, I, I just love doing it. You know, I tell them at work, don't count me into any work in September because I ain't going to be there. <laughs> the guy with the luggage rack, his tools are at the very bottom of his pack, you know. Same place you put your raincoat, you know, always at the bottom <laughs> when you need it the most. So right. they'll figure that out. They'll put their tools on top after that. The first three days are normally the hardest because that's where you're figuring out all your bugs and trying to work them out. Day four is usually pretty smooth for everybody and then it's generally catastrophic stuff.
So we just stopped, got gas with that Casey's down the road. And I don't know. I don't know if the battery died. It just stopped just stopped around good. I hate watching your struggle, but oh, I do no, like looking at that chest. <laughs> well, I had to take my shirt off because I didn't have a rag to grab my spark plug because it was too hot. So there's a reason I took my shirt off. <laughs> today. today. All right, so how many miles do we make it today? 23. Yeah, 23. Yeah. Uh, well, I was just going to push it It's not like it's going to fucking come out. Unfortunately, 24 miles in on the first day, one of the fan favorites today. It's kind of a bummer. They're already starting to try to source some parts and hopefully they'll find something and uh, join us tomorrow. It's a 1941 Zundap KS600, and uh, this particular bike was delivered to the German army. It was never a civilian bike. Um, it's a 600cc bike, overhead valves, um, a pressed steel frame, and it's a hardtail. It has a spring in there, but it has a really high spring rate, and so, you know, it's, it's more like a catapult. If you hit a, a pothole, it'll throw you 10 inches off the seat. It's basically like a toolbox. You know, you can keep all your stuff in there. I had it the fastest I've ever had it today. I had it up to 57 miles an hour. Oh, it's smoking, dude. That's fly. the sidecar, man. It's riding pretty good. I'm yeah, you guys are you guys are making miles. I... Yeah, she says it's pretty comfortable. So. Yeah, how, what's your impression? What'd you think? I loved it. It's pretty good. I'm really kind of surprised. You know, we we only got it got it about a week before this. We hadn't run it hardly at all. And just been built, so. What was the first American <laughs> magazine for women motorcyclists? I have no clue. There you go. I bet so, women awesome. riders. Well, this is something interesting that uh, was instituted especially for the cross country chase. The cannonball does not have this feature. What we do is we have daily quizzes, and those quizzes are a combination of, um, of obscure and arcane motorcycle knowledge, you know, the motorcycle culture combined with things like what two rivers did we cross yesterday? 12 questions every day, and that is part of the overall score. So you could have a perfect riding score, but if you don't do well in the quiz, you may not do well overall. And it just adds a little bit to the challenge. You're a great chair. It's a great, that's one big lazy boy though, isn't it? One time I made a pilgrimage to um, Cocker City, Kansas just to see the world's largest ball of sisal twine. Not to be confused with the actual other largest ball of twine, which is Minnesota, in Minnesota, but that's not sisal twine, it's regular twine. I've seen that one.
we made no mistakes, we just decided to take a couple of detours. <laughs> feels great. It feels great. I made all my miles and uh, um, it's good to stand up and relax for a few minutes. And, uh, but it feels great. The bike is running beautiful and I couldn't be happier. Okay. You got all your miles? Yes, I okay, you were you had to be here by 4.45 okay. and you didn't quite make it. Man. So okay. you were two minutes late, 4.47, so you don't quite get full credit for today. Okay. So sorry about that, but be aware that uh, well I mean right now you is there a clock in there somewhere? Yeah, but I have battery problems. That's why it's all messed up. Okay, well you need another you need a risk. Go to Walmart, get a risk. Yeah. But anyway, you've got to be Got to be here by this time. Okay. And you were yep. two minutes late. Yep. And yep. so were those other three bikes. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So anyway, okay. sorry, but That's all right. I understand. you made it and you got all your miles. I understand. Today. Okay. Thank you. We're doing well. Day one is done and dusted. Day two, actually. Let's see the house of bike. Let's see the bike. The bike's good. I, I saw you a couple times checking right something. Right. I don't know. Did you have anything come up? Or? No, you just check, yeah, make sure everything is still there. So it, was, uh, rally, yeah. it was good. It was a good day. Right, let's talk about what you're running. What is it? It's a 1956 Triumph TR5, 500cc twin. There we go. They rode down to ride some of the Ozarks and uh, and come and see me finish here in Rolla. It's just amazing that the riders and the machines can make that trip. I got good luck. Because I could be on the other side of the coin just like that. Right. You know? We made some mistakes and we made up some time and we got here. And it was a great day. It was real good, made all our miles. It feels nope. good to get it started, right? Yeah, yeah, a lot better than the Cannonball last year. Yeah, Broke yeah. down 76 yeah. miles in, so that's yeah, great. Right. I got here with three minutes to spare. There you go, I'll let's take your helmet off. <laughs> Oh man, I, I thought this was going to be a more painful on my body. So far, so good. And I wasn't sure about twisting this while riding. That was outstanding. I didn't get lost, although I did talk and hang out more than I probably should have. But I, I mean, this was so much fun. I, I hope my body holds up for the whole 10 days, but it was absolute blast. I'm real impressed. Todd Rakovich. I've got a 1942 model WLA Type 5. These were these were made between 19, late 1941 and 1945. They were all labeled a, a 42, so the Army quartermasters could keep it simple when it comes to parts and supplies. This one was sent to Russia in World War II as part of the Lend-Lease program. And in 2008, it was located in a warehouse in Uzbekistan. Uh, by, a, by a man that was on temporary duty with the American Embassy in Tashkent. He couldn't export it because he didn't have privileges, so another person at the embassy bought it from him as a courtesy and tried to find somebody to pawn it off on. A friend of mine was the facilities manager. He, he finally bought it, uh, wanted the project to restore it. He didn't ride a motorcycle, but he liked to restore it. He transferred to New Zealand, where I was, and just as he's getting ready to retire, I bought it from him, finished the restoration, drove it for two years on New Zealand before shipping it home in my household effects. So it's literally been around the world. hot and we had uh, between the three of us on the RVL team we we uh, had a, had some issues and we kept fighting them and um, we got one of the bikes across but it took a team effort to do it and it's just one of them days some day you're living right some day you're not
big first day for the Cross Country Chase Stage 1, where we departed Springfield, Illinois this morning. 212 miles, we're here in Rolla. It was not without any excitement, let me tell you. We had bikes three, four miles in this morning that were on the side of the road already wrenching. Unfortunately, we picked up one of our fan favorites this morning, 24 miles in. Jake and Ginger on the chopper. I know a lot of people are bummed, but I know they're already sourcing parts. Five or six, seven, eight other bikes on the trailers. We'll see what happens and who makes the starting line in the morning. Yeah, just, just a little bit stuff. I mean, we didn't have any problems today. Um, you know, it just seemed like the day went really quick, though. A lot of people were just barely getting in, and some people didn't get in, a few people on the on the sweep, and um, lunch was really quick. Oh, okay. But, yeah. uh, but we got in probably like, uh, she got in about 10 minutes for her drop dead time, and so I was about 25 minutes or so, so it was good. It's been an awesome adventure so far. I didn't think I'd like it. I told him I was scared to death. I almost backed out. I was trying to figure out how to back out, but I'm glad I came. So tomorrow, well, we got almost 300 miles to go, and uh, it should be should be good. Oh. <laughs> that's, lo that's long. This was the longest I've ever went. Oh. So tomorrow will be the longest distance I've ever went. Wise. Distance wise, I mean, wise, we've yeah. had long, long right. ride days but and stuff. Wise, but distance-wise, yeah, this will yeah. be the longest I've ever gone. Yeah, what are you riding? What is it? It's a 1960 Panhead. Yeah. What do you call it? FLH. It's FLH. FLH. Yeah. It's nothing, nothing much different than a Heritage. Just, you know, actually just a little lighter, although you think it's heavier. Um, and it don't have an electric start. <laughs> yeah, that's the, that's the kicker, get it? The kicker, yeah. And the box thing he was showing me before we even started, I'm like, I'm not going to be able to do that. It's not as difficult as it seems. Yeah. I just got done looking everything over and, uh, Bike looks good, ran good, but got a lot of days left, and anything can happen to anybody on this race. There we go, beer box. Little beer box. Beer little box. wrench. Little wrenching. Little beer box. Yes, yes. Oh yeah, you got it. You got it. Keep it going, cowboy. That's how it is when you beat on your stuff. Yeah, it was like 26 miles in. That's all it was. That's all I made it this morning. So bombed. You know what I mean? Like, but it is what it is. I mean, either I put it in the van and go home or fix it and keep riding. So, we, we sourced pistons today. We got two used pistons, two brand new pistons with rings. Everybody's over here hammering on it. We'll have this thing running by midnight. Oh, we're, gonna, we're doing a chopper builder show right now. Oh, yeah. yeah. Chopper Chronicles. Do you have all the necessary tools to do this stuff? Kind of. Okay. Yeah. I was working on a Vincent earlier, never touched a Vincent in my life, and the guy's like, here, I'll show you how to do it, and I learned a bunch about those, and this is what it's all about, is learning everything, for sure. I'm freaking excited to be here, and it's, uh, it's nice to keep people on the road, that's that's what it's all about, we gotta get to California, as, much, as many of us as possible, you know. push it across the starting line. It's all together, it just didn't fire and we we're up until three o'clock this morning. And it's what time right now? 6.30? Yep. Yeah, all you guys loud, loud motorcycles woke me up, you know? <laughs> Those Harley douchebags fucking yeah. rah, 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 <laughs> Connor too, I mean, he was the one that helped me all night long, so. Well, he wants me to push it across the line so then I'm not disqualified. And uh, then we're just gonna try to get running today. At least I'll have most of the day. So, there you go. I'll see you guys where um, where we're we going. There we go. Hello, man. I told you. 
get my bike started. We are in Rolla, Missouri on our way to Claremore, Oklahoma this morning. 299 miles today and uh, they forecast uh, good weather, a little rougher roads here, but uh, the chase is on, baby. We're on it. My spark at what we got loose Just all the above running good right up to this point it's a beautiful morning though run so nice too but it wants me to get my exercise if I work it it's gonna work me what's your checklist what are you, what's, what steps are you going through right now I got the spark the charge I think I got enough gas to it so what I gotta do is let it set for a minute and I think it'll fire right up it's temperamental Like I said, I had to let it sit for a minute. It went a little bit of a rest. After it gets this little rest, she's temperamental. Sir, my keen eyes tell me that something might not be right. <laughs> You're dead right. We, just <laughs> we got plenty of fuel. The fuel's, fuel's pissing out, so. They were running so good. The cool air makes them really get along real well. And then we had problems yesterday with both of ours, and now it's Merle's turn this morning. So we'll get him straightened out here. Uh,
lost some air. He got a little spooky. That's going sideways. That's how nice. What is this, a yours too, Mark? Yeah, I didn't, I wasn't sure it was you, and then I saw Dave, and I go, oh, that's got to be Mark. Oh, yeah. Fuck, we're... Ah. We need a little air in that tube, right? Yeah. Put it, I usually put air in once it gets in. To get it in, we need a little bit in it. Won't hurt. How am I looking on the other side? There ain't nothing to look at. Oh, the nut's there, okay. It's captive, Axel. Actually, that's bitching. You don't have to fuck with the chain, dude. Huh? That's yeah, bitching. Yeah, fuck it, hey. You're Tighten her down. Set. Go home, go home. You ready? Yep. Yeah, okay, home. you're good. So I got to average 35 miles an hour. 40, no, 35. We might make it. We might make it. The heat, uh, flat tire on the rear going sideways, and uh, Todd stopped in to give me a hand. We got that tire changed double quick, and Todd runs out of gas on down the road, so we dumped some out of this bike into there and some others. Larry died out here with a bad battery, so I stopped off, gave him my battery, and I'm still here and I'm hungry. Time. And I made time. There you go. Okay, yeah. yeah. We'll be back in a minute. We're going to go try and get some. There. Uh, how was that for a day two, man? It was hot and fast roads. Great, oh, okay. great. That's perfect. Everything's great. I made it here, three minutes to spare. Yesterday I was two minutes late. I watched my clock, kept watching my clock. I thought, I mean, I just gotta get on the gas and uh, I'm not gonna be late today. So. First you put me on a rough road on a hard tail, but I shouldn't bitch, everybody's got the same. That rough road was too much, so I lost the saddlebag. Was that the first 10 miles? I made time barely. barely by the skin of these teeth, dude. They're fake teeth, by the way. That's my buddy Mark from Washington, man, on his uh, on his Norton. He's his big, fast Norton, but he, I came up on him. He his fishtail, and he almost went down. <laughs> so I turned around and came back. Sure enough, flat. Couldn't find a nail, and I said, Mark, let's do it. He had an old worn out tube that he brought with him. I couldn't believe it. Luckily, we had two people with us because he wanted to pull the fender off. That would have taken us 10 minutes. So we just lifted the whole bike up, and then he pulled the wheel out from under it. And I had to keep the bystander there to help us put the wheel back on. 
So I had to give him my valve stem. I sold him a valve stem. He didn't have the valve stem for the tube. So I sold it to him on the side of the road for 500 bucks, dude. He was desperate. Made time, yeah, points open, or got stuck open, and the bike shut off about 12 miles back. It popped off the covers, messed with the points for a minute, got it back going, and ripped into the finish line. Never had that happen before, but it's easy fix, so it didn't damage anything. Yeah, this is just great to have uh, this here. We've had nearly 100 motorcycles here, and I was surprised how many people came just to see the motorcycles. There were so many visitors that came up here and got to look around and see everything, and it's been a fantastic experience. We have a meeting on the back porch here at the Will Rogers Memorial and also inside. We get to learn about a little bit about Will Rogers as well, so it's been a great experience for us. Thank you all so much for coming out to the Will Rogers Memorial. We hope you'll make your way again over here and get to see us again. We're going to be doing some great refurbishing of the museum, and we hope you'll come back and visit, and we hope you had a safe and fun trip. Crap, I'm caught on film stealing my buddy's screwdriver. Go. That should be good. Gotta quit pushing the bike so hard. It's humid to me, but I'm from mountains in Colorado, so I'm not used to any humidity. But uh, it's the heat. Stage three, we're going to Elk City, Oklahoma. Um, it'll be a great day. We stop at Seba Station for lunch. A uh, great little museum run by Jared. It'll be a great day. It's going to be a little hot, a little bumpy. It's going to be a little disheveled when the day's over. <laughs> I've got 1,200 miles to get here, and this is going to be my first set of official miles uh, on the actual run, so I just want to get to the other end. Just taking Jody's bike for a test ride. We uh, blew the tire out on it like yesterday, so we put a new tire wheel on there. That's never We're up and running again today. Get some miles on it. Morning. Good morning. Try not to let it blow away. Try not to soak it in oil and grease. Just. Uh, Tighten some stuff up and a little bit of maintenance, that's about it. The 46 WL Harley. How does that feel to be out with your son? It's got to be cool. It's a great opportunity. Um, done the cannonball twice without him and it's pretty cool to have him along. Oh, dude. Absolutely. And he's good help and makes it easier for me. It's not a once in a lifetime deal. Because you can do it anytime you want, every two years. We're going to try and run a little hot, a little higher today. I don't know. Hopefully. Hopefully that doesn't create more problems for tonight. But we should have brought a 1960 pan so we could run 70 mile an hour instead of Dude, 34 BL. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got 50, 50 mile an hour motorcycles. Those guys are running 70. Ready to go, man? Hello. You have a good ride, right? Yes, we have. I think so. I hope. We right. believe. We believe. That's all you need to do. In rust, we trust. Okay, there we go. <laughs> We have new head gasket, we have some new gas, we have still the same weather and uh, still a lot of fun, so I'm ready. Everything's running good, everything's looking good, it's going to be a hot one.
start? What's going on? Well, it seems to be done. The engine is uh, seized up. So, uh, it seems terminal, unfortunately. Oh, dude. Yeah. Uh, noisy, locked up. We'll see. I'll put it on the truck seat tonight. We can fix anything, but... Uh, oh, sorry, dude. It is what it is. It's been fun all the way to here. Oh. But it is what it is. Yeah, that's <laughs> never... Test time. It is test time. <laughs> Wish we could stop more. I'm glad that there's a checkpoint here because I wanted to see this place. So it's good that there are checkpoints because then it forces you to stop. Yeah. <laughs> roads today. Not too terrible. Bike was running a little a little bit off today, so let's do a couple little adjustments here. Let's see what we can do. Just the countryside, just enjoying the countryside. That's how it ought to be. Yeah. Yep, weather's perfect, breeze. Great crowd here. Yeah, this is really cool. Where are we? I have no idea. <laughs> Oklahoma, that's all I know. We're just taking every second we got, sucking up the water. Had a nice stop here, nice motorcycle museum, and uh, we're out of here at 12.05, and a uh, little rougher road, I guess. Yeah, there we go. Well, I know these guys for quite a long time, you know, cannonball related. Uh, I ride Tilly, number, 70, uh, yeah, number 73. Just had to catch up with everybody. How's it feel to be with them? Wish you're out with them? Or well, you heck just... yeah, I want to be out with them. <laughs> <laughs> What is it that makes you guys do this stuff? We just want to. That's just all there is to it. It's just one of those things that you kind of grow up with it and it just stays with you. You hope to promote it with the younger kids and everything. So, anyhow, that's, a good ride. that's what we do. You know, yesterday we lost a generator about 60 miles out. And, uh, luckily enough, we were able to get one from uh, John Newman. From Texas, he came down to visit and had some generators on his truck, so 
I changed out the generator last night, and we're yeah. we're doing good this morning. We're up to what 100 and some miles, 101. That's right. So we can't complain. There you go. Another beautiful morning out in city Oklahoma starting stage four we're really losing a lot of people I didn't realize it, how much attrition we would have on this ride I think uh, just this morning alone I heard about another three or four riders that are, are heading home today catastrophic failures that they just can't get fixed and uh, route 66 is tearing people up you know it's, it's unbelievable Surprisingly enough, I am in second place in points today overall, which is the biggest shock in the world to me, but that's really because um, Paul Warrenfeldt missed a checkpoint yesterday and got docked 100 points. The thing is, second, third, and fourth are separated by two points between three of us, so that's, that's pretty slim. Yesterday was just kind of hard because of the heat um, and the bumpy roads on this hardtail, but uh, it's been great so far, really enjoying it. Fourth in class and way down the list overall. Some of these guys got to break down, help me out here, you know? How'd it go? What was today? This basically seems like some basic wrenching this morning. Yeah, a little bit, trying to get trying to get some lights going here. It's a bumpy road a and bump. broke the rough luggage rack off. I uh, was pretty fortunate because last night at the museum, talking to another rider, not a, not a, in the event, but had an Indian chief in the parking lot, said, you had a luggage rack on it? Yeah? Well, can I talk you out of it? And so I worked a deal with him, and uh, his luggage rack is on here now, and uh, my old one's in the garbage. Yeah, that's great. Oh, that the, the motor blew up completely. When we opened the bottom end, there's some pieces that came out, so no doubt, she's gone. But you know you learn every time. It's my third event. I finished the first two, you know, so the odds are still good for me. But, you know, I'll be back in two years. At uh, 15th, I think. Okay, so you're in the running. Yeah. But, yeah, no, no loss of miles and stuff. Uh, I don't know if I botched up a quiz or... Right. <laughs> Just not all the handicap points some of these older bikes get. You know. I'm doing very well. Ready to go. I hope my bike feels like me this morning. Uh -oh. She's not talking to me, so... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Gerard, number 70, AJS, and I'm from South Africa. 
Do you know your overall place? Yeah, I'm in 48th. 48th? Yep. So we're, are we in the running? <laughs> What's the plan we're not here? in the running. I'd be in the running if I did my uh, video, my pictures, and my bio, I'd be in second. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. But today, I'm just going to take it easy because, you know, it's a lot of miles to go. Last three, there's only three points. Three points um, in between us. Trying not to break my bike now at this point. Uh, Possum, my good buddy Possum, he's a good old Missouri boy like the rest of um, like the rest of my group, and he lent me his Carmen for the trip. I got my dad and my buddy Bunny Rabbit and Billy there following behind me. You know, you're in Oklahoma. This is you know Red Dirt country. You know, I'm gonna back her down a little more than I did yesterday on the field and just take my time if I have to take the penalty points and my bike still runs. It's all about getting to Santa Monica. What, what position are you in? Uh, position, I uh, 40. 40, okay. Oh, it's, uh, I'm, I'm uh, happy about this, you know. Yeah. The questions, uh, who brings the points, are very specific for uh, Americans. I don't know uh, when is uh, Lincoln born or died or maybe, sorry. But it's okay, I love it. Life is too short for later. Every guy said, oh, I make it later, 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 and no, they don't do it. So you have to do it now. Uh, I think 12th, dude, 12th, I think. It's only like five points out of out of a top four or five, though. No, number one's right down there, dude, check it out. I'm still number one. Tim's already told me. He's calling me the former number one already. What? <laughs> Beautiful state of Texas. 
This is the Cadillac, Cadillac Ranch. Ranch. <laughs> Everybody knows this place. <laughs> It's the perfect bike for this place, yeah, but we're not going to dig this in the ground, you know? Yeah. <laughs> First kick makes you smile. <laughs> It's amazing how thick the paint is. Yeah. It looks like spray foam on everything. I've seen pictures of it online, but never in person. So yeah, that's pretty neat. Can you get to ride your bike out here and park right by it? This is all paint. Yeah. I mean, how thick that is. You, if you chunk off layers, you can see the layers of paint. Like our paint stands in the shop. Yeah, yeah. oh, I know. My dad yeah. will chunk off. You ever do a cross cut? Yeah. yeah, and yeah. it's really cool because you can legitimately see the so layers. Like in the Everybody here calls me Clayface, and you are in beautiful Tucumcari, New Mexico. <laughs> I've got a lot of guys doing repairs and just tune-ups just to keep them in the wind, if you will. And uh, and I'm honored that they would pick humble little old me to do, to do this. But uh, I, I, I feel like I'm helping, and it feels good. And truthfully, just to be surrounded by these old bikes, even know that they're even still on the road and running cross country and not just to one bar, to another bar is the coolest thing ever. Uh, head plant and gasket got a load. It's been getting worse every day and this opportunity came here. This guy was really nice to open up a shop to us, so I'm gonna take advantage and do it tonight. Totally flashback to the old days. Iconic is the word, yeah. We stayed in a hotel down the road called the Historic 66. It's all Art Deco and cool. yeah, shag carpet and marble tile. It's very cool. All the riders this evening are in all these little historic town uh, hotels. Uh, the Blue Swallow, the Motel Safari, Historic Route 66 Hotel, and uh, the Roadrunner. People are really digging it getting really back into it and uh, experiencing what these guys did like back in the 50s and 60s. I mean, this this town is the true Americana and what we were looking for on Route 66. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. possible to turn on the light of the bike? Yeah. Okay, great. I'll tell you, this is a pretty sweet setup we got here. Not many uh, places you could park the bike next to the room. Well, I'm just finishing topping it off, and then she'll be ready for tomorrow. I've done all my service work for the night, and uh, cold shower and uh, some sleep.
to a little two pumps. I don't know, we all get mad at each other and start fighting. Probably we're big bad bikers, right? <laughs> Doubtful. Because on the chase we're always on remote back roads and we come across little teeny gas stations with two pumps and there's about 30 of us at once trying to get gas, so unfortunately it's a waiting game. Uh, evidently it says it's 80 miles to the next refuel. Weather is excellent. It's nice and cooled off a little bit. We're having good roads. The sun is behind us, not in our eyes for the moment. All is well in the world. I fixed my transmission this morning. The world is a happy place. Muffler came off. Oh, this is it. This bike just settles in. Beautiful. The, the red rock, that's, that's what gets me. Yeah. A lot of miles already. Already, but little rain today. Yeah. Looks like a little bit of rain. Uh, yeah, I'm ready. I'm expecting to go cruise down the interstate. Uh, you know, some fl uh, uh, flooded out roads. We're talking about it. I'm riding a 50 fan head. So it was good. Uh, There's a lot of crews at 55, 60. <laughs> yeah, we got here pretty quick. Real just scenery, but you know. Everything's perfect, so was it uh, places, um, just the hills, and just where you went through the canyons and stuff. That's just awesome. Did you do a rain dance for us? Rain no rain, no rain. You're doing I a sun dance? Rain. You see the uh, New Mexico flag, it's a sun, right? Right. No rain, no rain. We are part of Accident Scene Management and the Road Guardians organization, and we're here to keep all our riders safe. They keep us busy, you know? Um, so a lot of it is like heat related, you know, so we try to keep them in electrolytes and staying hydrated. But most of the time they're coming to me for band-aids and um, just more minor things. But, you know, they're, they're trying to keep the man and the machine going. So they forget about themselves, you know, they're taking care of their bike. And oftentimes little things we can do help them. We are at stage six on our way to Holbrook, Arizona. Five minutes, guys.
bike singing like a bird today. Oh, right on. It's my birthday. Oh, it is? 60 years old right now. Yeah, that's the one I just saw. I might as well put it on now, man. We ain't beating that. The more I love, the worse it gets. of tomorrow. <laughs> El Rancho Hotel. Here we are. Check her out. That's cool. Yeah, look at this. You see this lobby? Uh, this fireplace? Uh, oh, this is incredible. Can't believe they kept all this. Have to come back someday and stay here. Right. Check it out. Mm -hmm. Maybe you could get one of the haunted rooms or something. We're hanging out here at the Petrified National Forest just outside of Holbrook, Arizona. Everybody's trying to dry out from some of the incredible monsoons that we just went through uh, between here and Gallup. Uh, really high spirit still which is amazing because we spent the last 30 40 miles on the interstate uh, due to some of the roads being closed around this area this area has just been devastated within the last two months with uh, the monsoons that we did today flash flooding taking out the roads it's uh, it's been really difficult for us as the event promoters to, to do this area that we're going to do today and tomorrow We've actually changed the route six or seven times within the last two months. We had two two different route instructions. We had a 6A and a 6X, depending on what happened yesterday and what we thought was going to happen today. Good thing we picked the, the right one with 6X, uh, just with all the weather that we've had. And uh, it, I think it'll work out good and riders are going to get in. to taste the sand in my mouth so when, when you don't run a fender up front that's what happens. To clear it up I started airing this thing out and uh, lost a few bolts out of my shifter so but I, I got what it takes to fix that. We got wet, we put our suits on, we tried off, we took them off, we had to put them back on again. I went sideways through a mud puddle, a little straight away, put it into a controlled power slide and pulled out of that thing and you know <laughs> Weather forecast. Beautiful. The rest of the day. I have no clue, but that's what I'm going with. <laughs> that's what I said. <laughs> yeah. I thought I saw some lightning strike. Yeah, I just did. I saw another lightning strike. <laughs> it's Bunny and Clyde! It's Bunny and Clyde! <laughs> <laughs>
working on this, trying to get uh, smart, and uh, we're racing against the clock right now, racing against the weather. We got a, a huge front moving in. Oh, fuck, if you, can, you just heard that, that's crazy. So, hopefully we get this thing figured out and get her back on the road. If not, we probably only got a minute's time to, to figure out if, uh, go or get on the trailer. It's got to be the wire and the oil. Wire and the oil. Well, I'm going to milk it then, as far as I can. Because what would happen if I... Well, well it's going to get fucking hot. It's going to get really hot and you can melt the rear cylinder down. Yeah. That's why you want your ride so long. Okay. Twenty miles short. Where are you at right now? Twenty miles short. I can't give you any extra one over here either. It's only running on one cylinder. I can't go. It's like riding a single cylinder. And it's getting really hot. So there's no spark. It's You're so close. I know, I know. And look at it's pouring on us when you have the sun shining. Can I block the barrier? Once we pulled on, it, it really started cutting and coming down. And I'll tell you what, it's really hard to see. I can't duck behind a windshield because I've got a visor on. But I just pretty much, it, it came down to the point where the map team went. My gloves were wet, I have them in the floor pack to put behind them, but I should have had them on because it stings, at least with the gloves on. Your hands are getting wet either way. So with the gloves on, you don't get the sting. But hey, we made it, you know? And I drove behind Sean because I've got good lights on this bike. Rain today. No, didn't rain at all. Uh uh. A little bit of rain, uh, a lot of wind. Um, and it was uh, it was difficult. It was difficult, but we made it through. Got all the mines. I, I have to empty the water out of my boots also. <laughs> oh, funny. What happened there? You know, I dried out three times today and I'm wet again. Just for the record, I changed my mind. I'm gonna put my raincoat back on. Is yeah. it frickin' rain? I pulled up and I just saw your bike. Stage seven today, we are in Holbrook, Arizona at the Wigwam Motels. Gonna have better weather today and uh, a highlight of today hitting home in Arizona. And uh, we're gonna get to play with some donkeys. Another fun day. Right. Did a valve adjustment this morning. I, I think I'm good. I decided I'm putting my rain gear on. I'm not taking a chance today. Well, I got rained on coming over here, so. 
So we're gonna run for a little while with it and see where it goes. Well, once we get up to our well, Flagstaff, we're still in the high elevation. We drop down into Williams, Seligman. Once we get down to uh, Kingman, we're down into the lower, the desert part. And that's a pretty well can guarantee that it's gonna be good weather. Brian Law here in Winslow, Arizona, and we're looking at the bikes from the nice view from the cross country chase that came to visit. I'm at the Motor Palace Mercantile, which is our business. My wife and I retired and decided to open a business, and here we are. How are you? cleaned up and then uh, just when I got off the exit ramp it's doing the same things. So far so good. I had a great day yesterday. Yesterday was my favorite riding day so far, which most people won't agree because it poured rain on our place. It is the Guinness World Records for the most flavors of milkshakes. So I got a chocolate coffee marshmallow malt. Uh-huh. It's very good. It seems like we've, in the last three or four days, we've had a little more time. Uh, I don't know why, where, where, where it's coming from, but it just seems like we're, we're not pushing quite as hard as we were the first three or four days. Two hot dogs. Hot dogs. Awesome. That's your napkins right there. Perfect. Could you do me a favor? Yeah. Good. Cold started out and uh, hot now.
Got to give a big shout out to the Hopeman Hotel in the city of Hopeman, Arizona for hosting us today on the last leg of Stage 7. Uh, this is kind of one of the highlights of today, uh, landing here in one of these old mining towns. Riders get to interact with the burros and the donkeys and uh, witnessing the gunfights. Got to give thanks to Johnsonville for providing us a great food tonight and uh, providing us with a great brat.
plugs? Yeah, I've been fouling them out lately. Never leave home without your plug gap. I used to ride this yeah. road every year to Laughlin. My wife lost a battery cover right up here <laughs> off a 65 pan head. Well, it's my first time. First time in California even. See, I can't be a minute late getting in today. I'm only one point off of first. are closing up a little bit. Might be some more problem. Turn this switch. Ignition points. I think they were just closing up a little bit. Saturday, it's also known as Side Valve Saturday. Uh, a lot of us flathead guys are lined up out here right now. We've gathered all the Harley Davidson VLs in the, to get ready for a group picture. We're going to take the highway over Angeles Press down into Pasadena and then end them tonight in Burbank. The VL is a, a unique motorcycle and they made them between 1930 and 1936. And they are still a total loss oil system motorcycle. They follow the J's and the JD's and they're a side valve flathead. Uh, 
they are the, the unique because it was the first motor, real motorcycle that Harley made. Coming off the J's, which was mo basically a motorized bicycle, to the JD's, which was an improvement. Then they came to the VL's. They had a bigger frame, a longer frame, bigger wheels and tires, and it actually turned into a motorcycle, and they're beautiful riding motorcycles. 1934 VD, the VL uh, flat, big inch flathead. This is a 74 cubic inch, so it's the, it's the big inch one. What happened to me is last year I went on cross country chase. I rode my dad's uh, 47 knucklehead last year, and then I seen all these guys. I'd never really been around uh, VLs, and I seen all these guys riding these VLs, and I was like, man, that is neat. No, actually, I bought this bike for parts. I have a lot of VLs. I love VLs. And originally I bought this bike for parts, and then when I got it from Rob Nussbaum in New Jersey, uh, I decided that, you know, I've, I've got the parts it needs, let's just get it running. So we did, and then it became my test bike. When I build VL motors or transmissions, I put them in this to test it. And then comes along the chase, and I've got nine or ten VLs I could have picked. It's like, well, I'm not going to ruin a restored bike, or I'll just chase eyes this bike. One thing is everybody has a toolbox here in different places but they all have the same key and everybody loses them. So one of my favorite tricks is I weld it to the bottom of my gas cap. So I never lose it. I always know where it's at. I keep my oil drain yeah, system in there. VLs are, I call them the adventure bike of Harleys. They're, they got these I-beam front forks which are you can bend them but you got to almost try they're indestructible and you can go off-road on these things and bounce a lot the differences between the model years usually was just paint jobs there wasn't much design or manufacturing changes that would cost them money however in 36 like this bike here and this white bike they came out with a vlh which is an 80 cubic inch motor. The rest of the VLs are 74 cubic inch. I... Buffalo rug is like incredible. I thought they were kind of cheesy until I rode on a friend's of mine's bike that had one. It's like, oh my gosh, I got to get that. But I got an air pad hidden under there. Cole Deister, Johnstown, Colorado, 1930 VL, most of it. <laughs> the legal part. It's hard to cool it down when it's 97 in the shade and there's no shade. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> hey, but at least it's dry heat. Oh, yeah. It's dry heat in my oven, too. <laughs> there's people that are really smart retaining knowledge for these tests, and it really makes a difference. It is what it is. I'm not really here for the points. We got my tie up fixed, my second flat tie up of this trip. Two different ties, two different rims. It's a good time, and Jason does an excellent job, him and Leanne, of setting up the motels and the rides that you, are as good as you can get in the areas we go. It's just as pretty as it can be. For yeah, what it's hard moving a group. That's, that's yeah. a good, nice thing. Inside. Anytime you get a group more than 10, it becomes a real challenge. <laughs> good time. That's what it's about to me. It's not, it's not so much the scores. I know it is to some of the guys, but I just enjoy the, the setup and the whole experience and seeing all the bikes run every day. Yeah. Beat day will be tough, but my goal one step at a time. Today, I need to pass up Roger, right? One step at a time.
together, I was having so much fun. I, uh, I bet a push rod, destroyed it. I'm shit out of luck right now, so. Oh no, you're waiting for the sweep. Well, or a, or a friend with a push rod, but uh, I don't know that people would normally carry them. Yeah. Mike said he likes the open highway. I'll take this one anytime. Oh, I like this. Fantastic today. Uh, great mountains, great views, great roads. Couldn't ask for anything better. Right, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Really fun. Sure was. It's just the Mulholland Drive, drive. that's a pretty famous no, spot. There, that's the real one. But that, that's the one, yeah. yeah. I, I was really more looking the road now, not to get in any of what potholes and stuff like that. So because with this heavy thing, it's not not fun in the curves. Now. But I think we're supposed to enjoy the views. I took some nice pictures, yeah. I was enjoying it. I had a great view. I thought uh, uh, in Germany, the Alps are overloaded with all the cars and motorcycles and bicycles and boom, 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 boom. And this, this uh, area was uh, lonesome, lonesome the area. Oh, and good. I, I had, I took a snap of you, Mr. JJ. <laughs> How many states? I guess nine. Oh, you're on at number one. What? You got to add one because we went through Nevada. The, the, the trail tip. is actually eight states, but we went through Nevada. Right? We. Right. Plural. We, we. went through Nevada. Yeah. Nine. How, you know how about that? Um, how many miles is 66? Oh, 24. It's supposed 20, to be 24, 24. 43. Oh, I did 24. I did 24. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Boy, I did good on that quiz. Catching this, JJ? You yeah. catching this? The trip? Yeah. Yeah. But, um, you got to be in your toes on that road. Yeah, yeah Angel's Crest. Yeah, you notice that most guys were like in racing leathers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I did. Didn't stop you doing the biker style. <laughs> yeah, there you go. It was worth going through the desert today. <laughs> Yesterday's desert. Today made it worthwhile. It was a great ride today. So, how was the Thank you so much. I know. Thank you so much. It's the apocalypse right now. <laughs> this is like. Uh, Detroit, the Hummus is garage. Can I show? Yes, thank you. It's a pleasure. Pretty awesome, wasn't it? The fact that everything runs and sitting there with a battery charger on it, ready to go. The fact that he fired up some of the really cool shit, B12s, and uh, it was neat. And I think that was like a once in a lifetime opportunity to go see that. I mean, I don't. I, I was totally 
surprised by that. Uh, the Vincents were really cool. I mean, I've never, I don't know if I've ever even seen one, let alone one that's running. And then a whole row of them. And all row. How about them. the Bruff room? Oh yeah, I'm gonna have them yeah. all in here. We thought we were all cool with all our bikes, and then we all noticed that Jay didn't even come outside to look at ours. He's like, <laughs> like, like, oh, look at that ratty crap you guys showed up in. No, come inside and look at my stuff. Don't worry about what you showed up. It was no absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible. You don't much, see this stuff in Iowa. I'm pretty much overwhelmed. I've seen it on TV, has no idea the depth and the, how many city blocks Jay Leonard's garage is. He just kept going, one more door, one more door. <laughs> and not only the cars and the vehicles, the signage and the posters and the billboards, it was just endless. 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 It's hard to comprehend it all. You, you get halfway through one room and then into the next room and you forget what was in the other room. It's crazy. It was yeah. wicked cool. Yeah. I loved it. it I cool. can't believe how big that place was. I know. It's it was like huge. room and room. Yeah. And, and I was thinking like, how big is this building? A lot of roughs in there. Uh, yeah, 26. That's how many he had. 26 wow. roughs. He's like holding them. Yeah. I think the biggest single collection of roughs I've ever heard of was like seven or eight and he has 26. Yeah. That's crazy. You know what? It's, it's kind of funny because every time one of the cannonballers, you know, we become a family once you do cannonball. So every time the guys come out to visit me, they hey man, is there any way you can take me over to Leno's? I said, you know what? Let's make it easy. Let's just take everybody at once. He knows that they love what he has. So I think he's willing to take the time and actually show them and explain them everything because he knows that they're enjoying what he's showing them. The average person you take over there, oh, this is an 1890 steam engine. They could care less. You know, but these motorcycle guys, if you're a gearhead, you're a gearhead. That's what you like. <laughs> I rode this 1948 Harley-Davidson Panhead, courtesy of Morgan, um, in the cross-country chase, and we have made it to Burbank. So I had a gentleman on Instagram reach out to me and say, hey, I know you love old bikes, and there's this program where you could win a trip to race in the cross-country chase. And I looked into it and I was like, well, that's about the coolest thing I've ever heard of. <laughs> and so I took no time and applied that day. Um, fast forward a couple months later, I got a call mo Monday morning. It was a Monday morning from Jason. And he said, congratulations, you're the winner. You get to go on the cross country chase. Um, and I was like, well, this is the best Monday morning I think I've ever had in my life. <laughs> I cried. Um, and that was the start of this grand adventure. I really didn't have a whole lot of doubt in Megan because Megan is always a go-getter. She always tries to say that she doesn't you know, expect a lot or whatever, but Megan always expects a lot. Megan, she'll get out there, she'll give, her, give it all her best. So that part of it I wasn't too concerned and I know she's a good writer. So that wasn't a concern of mine as well, but she's still mom. And she was out there on the road for a lot of days, so, you know, there's that little bit of me that was a little worried, but very proud of it. I'm Carla Margison. Steve Margison. And I'm Megan Margison. <laughs> Thank you. Have a great day.
Hey, we're on a Santa Monica Pier where we are getting ready to do the grand finale of this year's Cross Country Chase, where we started with 89 riders that started in Springfield, Illinois just 10 days ago. We've trekked our way here. A lot of, lot of wet eyes right now. Uh, everybody, we got a whole shitload of people here in anticipation to watch these guys come across the finish line. We're going to hang out, chill, party a little bit, and we're going to find out who the winner of this year's Cross Country Chase is. Hey, JJ, long Woo! time no see. Oh, Haven't seen you yet today. Yeah, how do you feel, man? I'm great. We crossed the finish line and made it in. And uh, she's a little oily, but other than that, she's running strong. And uh, we're here. We made it. Look out there. Look at that. You made it to the coast right there. We made it. There it is. That's the, well, that's the beach. The other beach. <laughs> I come from the other beach. Here we go. On the east. It was epic. Beautiful trip. <laughs> lots of scenery. Lots of hills. Great people. What else do we ask for? Turn around, do it again. Exactly. <laughs> there you go. All the agree. people getting together and helping each other is special. It's the parking lot experience is what we are going to remember. When you're broken down and anybody will drop what they're doing and grab their parts that they got and their tools they have and their knowledge and help you, that's what makes the trip. Um, what were the challenges of doing a sidecar, man? Uh, hills and turns. We didn't have hills and we didn't have turns. It would have been easy. <laughs> but it, it, uh, she did okay though. Went look slow and climbed over them. It's a beautiful scenery. Um, I, I enjoyed the scenery. It's uh, a bucket list for sure, right? It, yeah. was, it, was, it was a hell of a yeah. deal. Some of the sights we saw, like the with a wig club motel, that was pretty cool. And there's the museums they had, we stopped in and looked at that. Was really yeah, there's cool. a lot of museums out here. Yeah. <laughs> Everywhere in the desert. Yeah. <laughs> We're in Santa Monica, California, and the trip was fantastic uneventful day which I like and uh, just been a great experience again get to travel half the uh, US right and uh, I got to a lot more states that I've never been to and I never really spent any time here the mountains everything are really really nice yeah that was cool well the best ride was through uh, New Mexico right out here through California that was the best yeah the coolest thing about the whole deal, we stop somewhere in Baja and drive at a stoplight. Jay Leno pulls up next to us in his silver Mercedes. I know you guys! <laughs> yelling out the window at us and waving at us and goes by. You know, that was cool. We're in Santa Monica. We made it. We're we on the pier. from the East Coast, from Long Island, New York, Suffolk County. Mulholland Drive was a little rough on the old bikes after uh, 2,000 miles, but once we got off Mulholland, the rest of it through the mountains, down to the Pacific Coast, beautiful road, beautiful ride. As soon as I saw that ocean, I knew I was home, baby. I knew we made it happen. There you go. So, good ride. It feels awesome. It feels like I've just I've accomplished something that I, I never thought I would accomplish, especially with all the last drama of the last few days and the bike breaking down, things happening to it. And I'm just grateful to be here with all my friends. Award the 22 cross country chase legend, closest score to date, separating first and second place all by one and a half points. Last night it was within one, a half a point. This year's cross country chase legend, Roger Green. kind of surreal, you know, it's like, did this really happen, you know? You know, when you start out doing something like this, you don't, I mean, some people probably strive for first place, but I just wanted to make it here, all in one piece and everything, you know, and this has been a very tough route, 
you know, all these flat tires, these breakdowns. Yeah, yeah I want to say thanks to the Chase family, you know, the old ones and the new ones. They, you know, there's a bond when you ride across the country like this with people that there's no other thing like it, really, you know. And then the support crew and the event that uh, Jason and Leanne put on is, you know, top notch and, and fun and, you know, and now I guess I got to do it again, right? I, I don't know. Or how do you top this? You got you to gotta go for the cannonball. How we look at Libby? Hot. It's terrible. It's fun though. Had a great time. <laughs> my fun meter is way up now. Got all my family here. That's incredible. This is Ventura. It's about an hour north of here, so we get down to the port. Thank you. This is really a picture. It's such a great event.